first of all, we've got from Renton School Board, Al Talley. He's the first person over here. He's also Renton Citizen of the Year. Thank you. We got some former bishops here and a light bishop. Uh, bishop Dallin Slaw. I believe he's over in the food line. <laughs> Bishop Robert Jones, also in the food line. And uh, Bishop Ryan Matson, which is her bishop right now. He's over in the back back there. Thank you. We have some Relief Society presidents, former Relief Society presidents. Sheldon Richardson. Stand up, please. She's sitting right over here. Deanna Donaldson. She's way back there. And Jennifer Orton, who's a Relief Society president right now. Thank you. We got some school district personnel here. John Hightower, principal of Highlands Elementary School. Doris Holtz, teacher. Stan and Rosemary Green, teacher and committee chair of Rent School District Retired School Employees Association. Velma Evans, teacher. Now we get down to the family. I'm going to rely on Lou Landers to introduce his family. They're right here in front. So if you would come up here, maybe you could have each one stand up. Hi, uh, thank you all for coming. This is uh, quite a surprising uh, uh, celebration. We didn't expect so many people here. Um, I brought my wife, Cheryl, with me, and uh, my daughter, Christy, stepson, Glenn, wife Lisa, and her daughter Heidi, and of course the guest of honor, my mom, Sarah May. And, uh, I almost forgot Mark, is behind the camera. Uh, this is a guy that can take some photos. Thank you. Thank you. We have some friends who are here, Glenn Gaines and wife. Way back in the corner. Uh, Brian Bollard. Some gave us calls and we don't know if they're here or not. Uh, Rosemary, whoever that is, and Gail. Okay, they're not here. Okay, this table here sort of, I, are you neighbors? I don't have any names of neighbors. Good friends. They're all great. <laughs> Charlotte Garrison. Charlotte Garrison. My husband Jim. Husband Jim. Granddaughter uh, Lauren Bachman. Granddaughter. My boyfriend Lamar. And my boyfriend son, Lamar. Son David yeah. Bachman. John David Bachman. And um, friend um, Donna. Donna <laughs> Politano and, and her Donna. daughter Jane. And daughter Jane. Thank you for Thank coming. You. Okay, we're going to start the program off with the early life of Sarah May by Dallin Slaw. Then we're going to have a musical number by Joy, Joy Birmingham, accompanied by her husband, Nathan Birmingham. We're going to have Education, Marriage, and Children of Sarah May by Deanna Donaldson. Travels of Sarah May by Sherry Mattingly. Medley of Songs by Mary Lou Call, accompanied by Nathan Birmingham. Tidbits, oh that ought to be good, of Sarah May's Life by my wife, Doris Ridley. <laughs> she also, um, Sarah May has a daughter in Hawaii, and she couldn't make it here, but she did send a letter, and Doris is going to read that letter. Oh, she gets Sarah May's early life. 
Sarah May was born on April 4, 1906 in Samaria, Idaho, to the happy parents of Sarah and Louis Landers. There were ten children in her family. She was the middle, of, middle child of seven surviving siblings. She says, when I got to college, I read about how one's placement in the family influences one's behavior. It was referred to as middle child syndrome. <laughs> I used it as an excuse to explain away all of my idiosyncrasies. Anytime anything went wrong, I would blame it on being the middle child, therefore it wasn't my fault. <laughs> Sarah May was baptized in a very cold river. They had to break the ice just so she could be dipped in the water. Oh, man. Oh. I still remember that, I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> like it was yesterday. <laughs> Sarah May married her high school sweetheart, Floyd Landers, in the, in the 1930s. They were married by a bishop in Ontario, Oregon. They have two children, Sarah Burgess, who lives in Hawaii, and Louis Sanders, better known as Luke, who we just met, and he lives in Issaquah. Sarah May has four grandchildren, four great grandchildren. She talks about her family often with great love and affection. Her family is a very important part of her life. school, briefly in Hawaii. It was called a receiving school, 
perhaps like our preschools now. The children only knew Japanese, which she did not know. Her first experience was to teach each child to count in English. She accomplished this by having the children march with their chairs and place them in a signed place, giving each child a chair the name of another. Her sister assisted her with making paper hats for the children to wear. While marching with their chairs, that's our Sarah May, always very inventive. <laughs> After the catastrophe, in Idaho, Sarah May knew that she needed to get a good job. She needed to be certified as a teacher, so she completed her degree and graduated from the University of Idaho. Afterwards, she attended a conference in Spokane, Washington. She sat next to a man named Oliver M. Hazen, superintendent of the Renton School District. He offered her a job. Originally, the job was to be a guidance counselor at Dimmitt Middle School, but the school was still under construction. So for the first couple of years, she taught at Highlands Elementary School. Sarah May's education background is amazing. She has been to the University of Idaho, University of Hawaii, Western Washington, University of Washington, and she went to school in Greece for spring quarter. She even attended college with her daughter, and they graduated together. She participated in a women's study program in New York, living for a time in a loft which had been turned into an artist studio. Her life has been, and still is, so full. Most of our lives here are pale, are pale in comparison to her life. <coughs> Sarah May discovered a program called the Friendship Force. This program was started during the Carter administration, which combined a stay at home, or let's see, hold on, which combined a stay with a host family with a commercial tour of the country. She found that she was welcome on tours organized through various universities, and that such groups, such as Elder Hostler, provided travel and study opportunities, both in the United States and abroad. She has also traveled independently, often finding groups to join her along the way. Although she has traveled with friends and relatives, she has many times taken potluck in choices of roommates or traveling companions. She has also almost always gotten along with the person she was assigned to, whether that person was older or younger. Sarah May says, I don't particularly like being the only elder person in the group. She says, I often find it difficult to slow my pace that of the that of the companion close to my <laughs> Let me tell you some of the countries she's traveled in. Brazil, Japan, Finland, India, Greece. She's been to Greece eight times. Egypt, Mexico, Ecuador, Honduras, Italy. She says she rubbed shoulders with the Pope in Italy. But that was quite the experience. Russia, New Zealand, Australia, Korea, Guatemala, China. She's traveled by freighter to China on that trip. Spain, Morocco, Sri Lanka, Fiji, Thailand, Czechoslovakia. She stayed on a pig farm in Korea. The owner was an executive, but there were no pigs in sight. She had the opportunity to have a family from Japan come over and visit us here and rent and stay with her. One of her most ambitious plans was to spend five months in Sri Lanka with two friends. The women calculated that if they rented out their homes and stayed that long, their trip would be almost free, since the cost of living was so low in Sri Lanka. As might be expected, once they got to Sri Lanka, Sarah May and her friends couldn't resist going to India, and ended up riding home for more money than traveling all over the subcontinent, staying in Ash, staying in ashram, and in general, experiencing all of the colorful contrasts of India. She recalls the laughter of children who thought Sarah May and her gray hair friends were a great novelty as they hiked up the mountain Kashmir. People are always asking her how she manages to finance her trips. She puts it this way, if I have the choice between repairing my dishwasher or buying a ticket, I'm going to buy a ticket. <laughs> And once I get there, I travel quite economically. And this is a quote from Sarah May for all, to all of us. We all laugh and cry in the same language, and we all get along just fine. That's her Sarah May, I'm not 
going to sing Yes, I Have No Bananas. That's, that's her favorite song that we found out. <laughs> um, first of all, let's, uh, these are tidbits, things that don't seem to fit in all the other categories that we had. And so that's why we have this tidbit section. First of all, Sarah May was a personal friend of Howard W. Hunter, and he happens to be our, the prophet, one of the prophets of our church. Also, she was a, she and her her brother, I believe it was, was a close friend of Ezra Taft Benson. Um, her brother was was involved in politics, and he had um, he was going to ha had to have a new home. And so, whose new home? Whose home did he buy? He bought Ezra Taft Benson's. Um, so from now on, when you see her, you better be doing a little help when you see her, okay? Um, Sarah Matinee was active in various church colleagues, but noted that her favorite, and this was a lot of the women in the church, her favorite position was serving on the state girls' camp committee. She used to take the church girls, at that time they were called the Gleaner Girls, to summer camp. She was part of the Boise State Girls' Camp, and she enjoyed it, did a lot of work with the mutual. We asked her what dances uh, did she do as a teenager? She said she does the Charleston, or did the Charleston, the waltz, the foxtrot, and sometimes the Virginia Reel. I asked her if she could still do them, and she said, yes, if I'm masked, I can still do them. And I, I'll take her, you know, I believe that, because at Halloween time, we have a Halloween dance here for all the adults and the children and everybody. She always comes dressed in a costume with little brass fingernails and the, the shoes that have the turned up toes and uh, the princess, all the purple princess outfit that she wears. And uh, she gets up and she dances right along with the, with the rest of us. So I know she can still do those dances. <laughs> now, how many wars did she, has she experienced in her lifetime? Uh, she has experienced six major wars in her lifetime. World War One, World War II, Vietnam, Korea, the Gulf War, and now the Iraq War. Uh, her favorite colors are red and blue, and as you can see around here, that's why it's red and blue, because those are her favorite colors. Uh, did you know that when she was 83 years old, she was a census taker in Seattle? She states, the newspaper advertisement said there was no age discrimination, so I took them at their word. <laughs> now, one year we had this really cold winter, but she didn't let that stop her from visiting family in Houston. Driving to the airport, and that alone in snowy weather is scary, her automobile became stuck in a snowbank. She abandoned her car, she notified a relative to come pick her up, and she caught a ride to the airport with someone, with someone, I hope you know who that was, Sierra May, with someone that had a four-wheel drive. She never has been one to pass up an opportunity because of the very few obstacles. Now, she enrolled in a, in a new intergenerational program at Western Washington's Fairhaven College called the Bridge Program. Every thought, everyone thought she was playing bridge. Instead, what it really was, she was participating in a program in which students of all ages, down to her, including her young grandson, live and learn together. A personal tidbit, Sarah May was my son's teacher when he was in the third grade at Highlands Elementary School. These people over here at this table over here are almost all Highlands Elementary uh, teachers that she worked with and that I worked with uh, off and on. Also, there's one other person over there that wasn't introduced. It's Ida Ham, who was the librarian for um, uh, McKnight Middle School, and she was also involved with a fair, with, uh, What's that friendship force? What friendship force? Friendship force program that Sarah May was, was involved in. Um, Sarah May, I have a couple of letters today, not just from Sally. But I have a letter here in my hand that I want to read to you. It said, Dear Mrs. Landers, uh, congratulations on your 100th birthday, a wonderful milestone in your life. I'm sorry I can't join you for your birthday party, but I want to extend my sincere wishes to you for continued good health, happiness, and many more special birthdays. Sincerely, Kathy Pioker Wheeler, Mayor of the City of Frenchton. Wow. Now this, this one I hope we both get through, okay? It says, Dearest Mom, well here you are at a special birthday party to celebrate you. I can't think of a better cause for celebration. 
I hope you enjoy every second of the day. You're supposed to find out me. You have given many parties, and I'm glad that you will be having many celebrations before, during, and after your 100 years. I remember many special parties you gave for me. One was when I was quite a little girl, about six as I remember. You hired a group to perform in a puppet show and had my favorite pops were involved that you made in Grandma's Big Bread Pan. Another party I remember you hosting was in Hawaii. By then I was quite a bit older than six. It was at Aunt Thora's Golf Club and was very elegant. All my friends were invited and a good time was had by all. Most recently was a birthday party here in Hilo, Hawaii at my Thai friend Max restaurant. Many came, people came and never bought nice presents and had a very good time. There were many elaborate dishes and even another birthday person who had a birthday the same day as mine. I'm sure you remember that Mac is planning a party here for you at the Japanese Pavilion at the park by Hilo Bay. She and all my friends are very fond of you. It is a pleasant, it is pleasant to have a mother liked by one's friends. I know many people are there today remembering good times with you over the years. It is wonderful that you have lived and continue to live in such a way that wherever you may go, people seek you out and want to be with you and honor you. I'm glad you're having a nice party and I'm sure a very good time. I'll be interested in hearing all about it. If someone takes pictures, please save one for me. Much love always, your daughter, Sally. children here that want to ask you some questions and I don't I don't see all of them here. Uh, Camilla, oh no, Cassandra, Cassandra Slaw, you want to come up here please? Uh, I don't see the birds. Okay, I guess, I guess it's just uh, Cassandra has some questions to ask her.
May the dreams you hold dearest be those that come true, and the friendships you share keep returning to you, and trusting in him to whom we all pray, may a song fill your heart every step of the way. <laughs>